Hey booktube, I'm back after being gone for a few days. Um, I went to visit my folks and while I was there I really couldn't film any videos. But I'm back for you um, today with a video about some of my old books that I have. Most of these I've gotten at library book sales. A few I collected uh, from the free bookshelf in outside of the English department at the university where I work. And I thought it would be fun to just go through these with you and show them to you. Some of them are not in the greatest condition and then others are in relatively good condition. So I'm going to start with the children's books that I have. And the first children's book that I have multiple copies of that I want to show is Heidi. Um, and Heidi is by Johanna Spirey. And this was a book that my mom read to me when I was a kid. And I really enjoyed it. And so whenever I see a copy of Heidi, I tend to pick it up, especially if it's in an older edition. And this is one of the editions I have. I got it at a library book sale. It's unabridged. It has Jody Stanley, January 8th, 1966, written on the end papers, which are also kind of fun. Um, it is a Whitman Classics Library edition. And this was published, let's see if it says, 1965 by Western Publishing Company. So that is my first edition of Heidi. My other edition I have of Heidi is one that I picked up outside of the English department uh, in the free book section. I couldn't believe that it was sitting out there because I just think it's really cool. Unfortunately, part of the cover is a little bit torn but I still just think it's really neat. So this is that version of Heidi. And on the inside, it says, Gift of the People of the United States through the Victory Book Campaign to the Armed Forces and Merchant Marine. So I think it was a program where they gave uh, books to um, the armed force forces and the people who served. Um, and this book is actually older than the other edition I showed you of Heidi. Um, this one is copyright 1925. And it has uh, illustrations in it. Let me see if I can find one here. They're in black and white. This is... Uh, I have come today to talk over something with you, said the pastor. So it's when the pastor comes to visit Heidi's grandfather. Um... Let's see. Here's another one of Heidi. And then in the front, there's a there's the same picture that, that's on the cover of Heidi. So yeah, this is one of my favorite editions of Heidi that I have. And actually one of my favorite old books. So Heidi from 1925. And as you can see right up here, it's kind of torn. Um, but otherwise, I mean, relatively speaking, it's not in that horrible of condition. I mean, it's a little discolored, but it could be a lot worse given how old it is. You know, 1925 and um, five years from now, that'll be 100 years ago. So not bad. Um, the other, next two books that I have um, that are children's books are from Louisa May Alcott, um, the author of Little Women. And I don't have L Little Women in this, these editions, but I do have two of the other books in that series. Uh, the first one is Little Men. And this was published... Hmm. It doesn't say when this particular edition was published, to be honest. Um, it's a junior deluxe edition from Garden City, New York. Um, and it's illustrated by Ruth Ives. And here's one of the illustrations. And then throughout the book, there are illustrations um, within the text. So yeah, cool edition of Little Men. And then of course it has this imprint on the front of it. And the other edition I have that's like um, Little Men is Joe's Boys. 
So that's what this one looks like. And this actually has an Ex Libris sticker in it. Uh, Marianne McGregor, 1972. It's like I said, I got these at a library book sale. So they had other owners at one point in time. Um, this is from Nelson Doubleday. The illustrations are by Ruth Ives again. Here's one of the illustrations. And then, let's see. There are illustrations throughout in this one too, I'm assuming. Yes, there's a full cover one or full page illustration. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, and I forgot, going back to Heidi. Um, I have another edition of a Heidi book. Um, this one is not by Spirey. This was written later on, and that is Heidi Grows Up. I've actually never read this one. I don't know um, what it's about. I guess I should give it a read. Again, it's the same as that first book of Heidi that I showed you. It's the Whitman Classics Library. Um, and these are the end papers. And again, it's that Jody L. Stanley. She wrote her name really big there. Um, Whitman Publishing Company. Illustrated by June Goldsboro. And again, it doesn't really say when this was published. Um, so yeah, that's Heidi Grows Up. I apologize, I should have had it in with my other Heidi books, but there you have it. And then another book that my mom read to me when I was a kid was The Little Lame Prince. And for the longest time, I couldn't remember the title of this book. I got it confused with several others. And then I finally found a couple copies of it at various library book sales. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the book. And so the first copy I have of it is this one. And you can see the prints here. Uh, and this is by... Um, Dinah Marie Moloch. It's hard to find the author on this copy. So it has the crown all the way around on this copy. Here's the inside. The end papers are really cool. Here's another illustration. The illustrations in this are by Lucille Corcos. This is an Illustrated Junior Library Edition, uh, and this was printed in 1948. So, cool edition to find at a library book sale of this book. The other second edition I have of it is um, just this plain red spined book. It says The Little Lamb Prince. And this one was illustrated by Colleen Browning. Browning. And there's an illustration for you. So yeah, this is another book that, like I said, my mom read to me when I was a kid. I need to go back and reread it and see if it's the story I remember, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so those are my editions of The Little Lame Prince. All right, we're going to get into some classics now. Um, and the first of those that I have is by Alexandra Dumas. And that is Count of Monte Cristo. I always want to say Count of Monte Cristo, you know, because that's the thing. Um, but yeah, this is a library book sale find. It's in rough shape, but I couldn't pass it up. It, it's just too cool. Um, it has the table of contents falling out of it, as you can see. And it looks like it has Gladys... No, yeah, Gladys Kelly is on here. And then stamped on the inside is Percy H. Kelly. I don't know who those people are, but okay. Um, and I don't know if I have... Anything that says when it was published, <clears throat> I think that is that, that is missing at this point. Um, but I'm assuming this is a pretty old edition of it. 
based on the condition it's in and just the way it's printed on the cover and everything. So, like I said, even though it's not in the greatest of shape, I still just think it's a cool, cool book to have. <coughs> Another edition I have is of Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. And it has just a plain blue cover. There's a little embossed etching here. Um, and then the spine is really pretty with this gold um, flowery type border. And it says Jamaica Inn. Let me see. This was by the Book League of America in New York. It doesn't say exactly when it was published. Um, but yeah, so that's Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. One I haven't read, so I should probably remedy that soon. I read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, and I actually predicted what had happened before it got to the, the conclusion, and so I was kind of disappointed because I felt like I, I knew what was going to happen, so, you know, I don't know. I, I know that's an unpopular opinion, but that book, that book made me mad, because like I said, I was able to predict what had happened. The next book I have is The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. And this is from the Literary Guild. That's a spine. This was published by Doubleday and Company in New York in 1946. And it has illustrations by William Sharp. So you can see some illustrations there in the prologue. Here's a full page illustration. So yeah, The Moonstone is one of Wilkie Collins' books I haven't read yet. Um, it's sort of considered one of the first mystery detective novels. Um, and I need to read it. I also need to read The Women in White. I started to read it and then never finished it. I have read No Name though. Um, and I enjoyed that one. So I really need to get to these two. I have another like paperback copy of uh, The Moonstone, which I think I'll probably read rather than this edition, just so I don't um, hurt this particular copy of it. It's in good shape, but I still don't want to, you know, mess with it. Next up is a nonfiction book. It's by Janet Whitney, and it is Abigail Adams. This is a library book sale find. It's got the horse and buggy and a, I'm assuming maybe a barn in the background. Spine. It's got some discoloration here. Um, and the inside is a map. Um, it's the colony of Massachusetts Bay on the map. There's Abigail Adams at the time of her marriage. And this was published by Little Brown and Company in Boston in 1947. So yeah, this is a cool find. And again, it's another one of those books, <clears throat> excuse me, that I haven't read yet, but I really need to. I think it'll be interesting to read um, a take on the revolution through the eyes of Abigail Adams. So. And then back when Emporia had its independent bookstore, Ellen Plums, um, I found um, that she had some old editions of books in there. <clears throat> that people had gave her and she priced them and had them for sale. And I found this old copy of Lorna Dune. So the front is just green and then it has this spine with some intricate red flower details on it. And Lorna Dune is by, um, oh, what is his name? Blackmore is part of his name. R.D. Blackmore. And this is a romance of Exmoor. It's illustrated by John Austin, the Heritage Illustrated Bookshelf in New York. Here's an illustration of Lorna Dune. And this edition was copyright or published in 1943. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it gives a preface here of how this book came to be, which is interesting. 
Um, let's see if I can find any more illustrations here. There's one in text. This is another one that I have a copy of, but I haven't read it. Need to remedy that soon. Um, I think I'm going to really enjoy this one once I actually sit down and read it. Uh, I believe this is the only copy of it I have, unless I wanted to read it on my Kindle. So I'll probably read this copy. It's not in terrible shape. It does have this weird hole here in the middle of the cover, but that won't affect it too much. Um, for this copy, I wasn't too sad about it. The top um, edges of the pages are red. I don't know if that's something somebody else did or if that's the way it came, but yeah, one of June. All right, let's see here. I have some Dickens books. Um, as you know, as I've said in previous videos, Charles Dickens is one of my favorite classics authors. So anytime I see old books by Dickens, I snatch them up. And this was another library book sale find. Not in the greatest of condition, but I got it anyway because I thought it was cute. And that is a copy of A Christmas Carol by Dickens. And you can see the spine is pretty battered. Um, definitely not a reading copy, but I couldn't help myself. It's a library reject. I think it's from the Emporia Public Library, actually. Um, and I don't know what the 6.7 out of, out of 5 means. But anyway, um, let's see here. This was from... Athen An Anthem in New York, 1966, illustrated by Philip Reed. Fun little illustration there of a guy. Um, let's see. These illustrations are kind of cartoony in this particular copy, which is kind of cool. Um, I've read A Christmas Carol multiple times. I've seen all the different movie versions of it, the one with Patrick Stewart. Um, what's the one, what's the guy's name in the other version? God, I can't think of it. And then I've seen the one with the Muppets. Um, yeah, I love all of them. And then, of course, like I said, I've read this, um, uh, Christmas Carol multiple times. It's one of my favorite Dickens books. Another Dickens book that I have is Nicholas Nickleby, and it's Fonse. This is the cover and the back. Fine. Um, this one is actually from the Collector's Library of Famous Editions, the Easton Press. Came with this little sheet. Um, it has the ribbon bookmark. Uh, let's see. There's an illustration. This is another illustration. And this was illustrated by Stephen Spurrier. Um, and then it was published in 1940, uh, this particular edition. So I really love this edition of Nicholas Nickleby. Um, yeah. Oh, and if I didn't, if you didn't notice, the edges of the pages are like gold. Another old edition of Charles Dickens that I have. I actually found at the antique mall that we have here in town um, and so I had to get it and this is the Pickwick Papers um, and this is from Burt's Library of the World's Best of Books. That's the imprint on the embossed emblem here. Oh yeah, and it's down here too in gold. And there's the man himself. As you can see, this book is not in the best of condition. The cover's falling off of it. Um, doesn't say when this particular edition was published. Um, it does have somebody who wrote in very cool handwriting from Ella to Nanny, I think, March 13th, 95. I don't know if that's 1995 or something. I don't know. But I don't think it's 1995, <laughs> to be honest. Um, 
So yeah, that's my edition of the Pickwick Papers. I don't think I have any other Dickens books. Um, I have a J.M. Barry novel that I've never read, and that is Tommy and Grizel. So that's the cover of it. Spine. Illustration. This was copyright in 1900 by Charles Scribner's Sons. I don't know. Yeah, it has illustrations in it. In black and white. Um, does it say who illustrated it? Let me see. Mm, it doesn't. Alright, so that's Tommy and Grizel. Alright, uh, so next up are some copies of some parts of Victor Hugo's, Hugo's novels. Um, I couldn't find the complete set at the library book sale when I picked up these two, but I just thought they were neat, so I had to pick them up anyway. Um, and so this is uh, Les Mis Part 1, and it's an illustrated edition of Part 1 of Les Mis. There's an illustration. Uh, trying to get the, there we go. Let's see, it's illustrated with elegant wood engravings by, it's published by P.F. Collier. Um, and it doesn't say when this particular edition was published that I can see. Gives a list of the illustrations and then it has columns for the writing itself, more like a serial type publication. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, again, not necessarily in the best of condition, but I, it was too neat to pass up. It has this pretty embossed engraving on the back of it. I don't know if you can see that very well, but. And then the other one I have is very similar to Les Mis, but this is uh, Toilers of the Sea. And again, it has the elegant wood engravings. Um, and this is volume four. So again, it's not the entire work of Toilers of the Sea. Um, And it also has the columned pages. So that's my two illustrated Victor Hugos. I wish that I would have ha found the complete volumes in these, but they weren't at the library. I don't know if someone else took them, or if it wasn't a complete set that was donated. I don't know. But they're still neat either way. Excuse me, I have to reach way over to grab the rest of these. All right, next up is um, from Washington Irving and it's Tales of the Alhambra. So it has an embossed design, a red speckled cover that's wrapped in plastic. I've left the plastic on to protect it. It's got this leaf floral gold binding. See, it doesn't it's printed in Spain doesn't give a date though so I always thought this was cool I'm not a huge Washington Irving person but this edition I couldn't pass up oh I have another Dickens book um, I forgot about this one this is David Copperfield It 
It's a standard English classics edition. Has some information written in the front of it. Something about England. I don't know. Um, anyway. And then some illustrations in the front. An author portrait of Dickens himself. It's got an, an introduction and notes by Philo Melvin Buck Jr. It's published by Gin and Company. Copyright 1910. So I think this is one of my oldest editions of this book. And then I have Adam Bede by George Eliot. And papers are some flowers. This was from New York John W. Lovell Company Publishers. And it doesn't give a publication date on this particular copy. Um, and I don't think it's illustrated. But yeah, cool edition of Adam Bede by George Eliot. And then my last two books are actually about um, royalty from England. The first one is Queen Anne Boleyn by Francis... Um, Francis Hackett. So it's got this embossed um, on the cover. It's got like a crown and then in the inside it says Queen Anne Boleyn. I think it's probably pretty hard to see. It's the spine. There's actually the dust jacket stuck inside of it. This is a novel. This is what the dust jacket looked like. It's in pretty bad condition. Um, I actually found this I believe at the antique mall as well. Um, so, yeah, Queen Anne Boleyn. Actually, no, this is a library copy because it has that, or library book sale copy because it has that sticker on it. So, yeah, no, this is library. Um, but I thought it was neat. And I've never read, I haven't read this novel of Queen Anne Boleyn. I, I need to. I'm a little scared to read this copy because it's not in the greatest of condition, but I think it'll hold up well enough for me to read it. And then my last uh, old book that I wanted to show you, again, is another um, royalty-related book, and it's about Queen Victoria, and it's by Lighten Strachey. And this is one that uh, the owner of Ellen Plums gave to me at one point. She knows I'm obsessed with England history, um, and so she gave this to me. There's an Ex Libris in there. Happy birthday, 1931 to Bernard. <laughs> um, and then, let's see. There's a picture of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert and their kids. This is from Blue Ribbon Books, New York. Copyright 1921 by Harcourt Brace and Company. Uh, the 21st printing was in January of 1931, and it's actually dedicated to Virginia Woolf. So that's cool. I don't think there's any illustration. Whoa, what's that? Hmm. There's some newspaper clippings and stuff in here. Weird. Dear Father, this little bookmark brings you the best of birthday wishes from all of us, Francis. P.S. I'm going to send you something else next week. Maybe you'll like it. I can't tell what the rest of that says, but yeah, that was inside the book. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so yeah, and then there's these newspaper clippings. Anyway, so that's Queen Victoria by 
uh, light and stracky. So yeah, thank you to Marsha who used to own Ellen Plums for this particular copy. And that is all of my old books. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you again soon. Thanks, BookTube.